Hello, and welcome to another quick lesson with me, Jacob Woolcock. Today, we're going to make our own digital video postcard, and it's going to look something just like this. You can see I've got some lovely videos of my local area Cornwall, and I've made it look like a really cool vintage postcard. And if you listen, there's even a soundtrack. It's good, isn't it? To make this work, we're going to follow five simple steps. In step number one, we're going to use Keynote to design our own postcard. You can make this look however you want, but there's a trick that I'll show you later on to make it work with our videos. And then in step number two, we'll take this postcard out of Keynote and get it ready to go into iMovie. In step number three, it's time to start finding or recording some videos to use in your postcard. I'll show you how to record a time-lapse video if you'd like to. And then in step number four, we're going to bring it all into iMovie and we're going to create our video postcard. I'll even show you how to add some filters and effects to your videos to make them really pop off the screen. And last but not least, in step number five, we'll add our own soundtrack and we'll export our postcard as a movie file that you can share anywhere you like. So, all you're going to need for this is an iPad with Keynote and iMovie installed. If you've got some videos of your local area, even better. But don't worry if not, because you can always record some during the video. And that's it. Grab an iPad and I'll meet you in step number one. OK, we're going to open up Keynote and we're going to create a new blank presentation. I'm going to go for one with a white background and when it opens, I'll delete those text boxes as normal. And from here, I want to add in a rectangle that fills most of my page. It's really important that I make this rectangle a bright green colour, and I'll show you why later. But for now, all you need to know is that that rectangle will soon be replaced with your video clips of your local area. So make that as big or as small as you want for your postcard design. From here on out, it's up to you what you make this look like. I'm going to add in some text boxes saying greetings from Cornwall. I'm going to choose some nice big bold fonts to make it really eye-catching. And I'm going to choose some colours for my text. I won't talk you through this bit step by step because everyone's postcard design will be different, but I will point out a couple of things that I'm doing here. The first one is the background of my page. So my green box doesn't quite go to the very, very edges because I like a postcard with a kind of a border. But I want my postcard to look a little bit vintage and retro, so I'm going to change my slide background to an image of some old paper that I've saved into my photos lab. You could use any colour or any texture you like here. I'm also going to add some drop shadow to my text and my green box. That will give it a little bit of depth later on, but again, you don't have to do this. The last tip that I want to share is to make your rectangle look slightly less, well, rectangular and perfect. With my vintage postcard style, I want it to look a little bit tatty and worn. So I'm going to tap onto my green rectangle, and on the format panel, I'm going to my outline border. At the moment, it's very thin, so I'm going to make that border quite thick and chunky, maybe about 40 points, and then I'm going to change the style. At the moment, it's a crisp, clean line, but you can choose a variety of different options here, and I really like this one that looks a bit hand-drawn. When I tap on there, it looks a little bit odd at the moment, until I change the colour of that border to match the colour of my rectangle itself. Now, almost instantly, you can see the effect I'm going for. My rectangle no longer has clean and crisp edges. Instead, it looks a little bit worn, almost like a torn paper effect, which is exactly what I want. Take as long as you need here to design your postcard. It can be as different or as similar to mine as you like. And when you're ready, step number two will begin shortly. This one's a really quick step. And all we're going to do is export our Keynote file as an image. So tap on the three dots in the top corner and then go down to Export. From here, choose Images. On this screen, make sure you're on the highest quality possible, and then you're going to export and save that to your Photos album. And that's literally it. Super quick step, but now that's going to be ready for you in step number four a little bit later on. OK, it shouldn't take you long to do that, but as soon as you're ready, we'll move on to step number three together. It's now time to gather up the video media that we want to use in our postcard. It might be you've already got videos of your local area or videos and images that you want to use for your postcard. But if you don't, I'm going to show you how to record a time-lapse video right now. So jump into camera 
And on the right hand side where you've got photo and video, we're going to cycle through there until we reach time lapse. I've got my iPad on a tripod to try and keep it quite stable, and I've set up looking at this beautiful Cornish mine. Now, if I press record on time lapse mode, you're going to see a slightly different circle around the record button, a little bit like a stopwatch. And what the camera's doing is it's taking one capture every kind of half second or so. It'll then put these together into a video, which will show movement in really interesting ways. For example, the clouds will look like they've been sped up moving across the sky. It's worth knowing that recording for two or three minutes will result in a video that's only about five or six seconds long because of the way this works. So record for as long as you can to make sure you've got a good length clip for later. When you finish recording, tap on that little preview button and then you can watch your time lapse and you'll see how cool the effect looks. This looks great with lots of movement like people or lights or cars. They really work well in time lapse. You'll probably want to pause the video now to go away and either find your videos or record your videos. I'll wait here as long as you need, and step number four is here when you get back. All right, let's put everything together now to make our postcard. We're going to jump into iMovie, and we're going to create a new project, which is going to be a movie. From here, we're going to choose the clips that we want to put in, so the videos or photos of our local area. I've made an album with time-lapse videos in, and I'm going to choose those in the order that I want them to appear on my timeline. When you've done that, press Create Movie at the bottom of the screen. Immediately on my timeline, I've got those different clips, and if I scroll back to the beginning and press Play, you'll see that for me, they're all time-lapse. You haven't got to use time-lapse at all, but I think it works really well in this particular effect. Now, as I scroll through, I'm happy that those clips are in a good order, and that they're all a similar length. I think that makes the postcard look better in the end. So now it's time to navigate the image I exported from Keynote earlier in the media library. When I find that image and tap on it, I'm not going to press the plus button. Instead, I'm going to press the three dots. And then I'm going to choose green slash blue screen. You've probably already worked out that that green rectangle is going to act as a green screen, but there's your proof. When you do that, it's going to drop it onto the timeline and it should automatically detect the green area and make it transparent. That means your video will now be sat behind your postcard, and you should see a really cool effect immediately. If your postcard doesn't quite fill the whole length of your timeline, tap on it once, and then pull the yellow handle to stretch it all the way across so it fills your entire timeline. As you scrub for your timeline, you'll see that effect in action. But for me, I want to change the strength of the green screen ever so slightly, because I think it's removing a little bit too much of my text. So tap onto your green screen layer, that's the postcard one you just imported, and then in the top right hand corner of your preview window, you're going to press the settings button. From here, you can adjust the strength to your taste to find out what looks best on your particular project. The last thing I want to do here is to make sure my video clips fit into that vintage aesthetic that I designed earlier. So if I tap onto one of my clips at the bottom, and then go onto the Filters button, I can change the colours and the visual look of that clip. If I jump through a few of these, you'll see the differences can be quite subtle or quite profound. I really like the one called Blockbuster for this particular style. In order to have some continuity, I'm going to choose every one of my video clips and apply that Blockbuster filter to it. That will make it look slightly aged, a little bit oversaturated, but it really does fit with that kind of torn up vintage postcard feel. When you've done that, jump back to the beginning and press play and enjoy your postcard at this stage. Take your time here to import your videos, add your green screen layer and then change that filter. When you're ready, step number five will begin shortly. Our last step today is to add a soundtrack to our postcards. So where that media browser is, tap onto audio at the bottom and then go onto soundtracks. From here, you can tap onto any of these to sample them. For example, Betty, or Grey, Blue, Grey. And as they play, you can choose if you want to use that one or not in your video. I actually really like that last one called Blue Mountains. So I'm gonna add that one to my project and you will see automatically it fills the length of my video. The really clever thing here is that that soundtrack will be customised to fit your length of video. If it's longer, the soundtrack will be longer, and if it's shorter, it will trim it down for you. But it won't just cut off at the end. 
the soundtrack has a natural beginning, middle and end to really make it sound great. Press play and have a listen back now. Finally, let's export this as a video file. So press done in the top left corner and then press the share button on the bottom of the new screen. From here, you're gonna tap on to save video and it's gonna export your video into your Photos app. Let's jump across to Photos now and you should see your postcard there. When we go on to it and press play, hopefully you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Wow, well done for getting this far through the tutorial, and hopefully by now, you too have created your own green screen video postcard. We have learned how to make a template in Keynote that we can then export and use in iMovie as a green screen feature. We've also learned how to record time-lapse video, and we've put these things together with a soundtrack in iMovie to make a video postcard. Great job. Of course, one of the best things about postcards is sending them to people and sharing them. So if you're able to, please do tweet me on Twitter, on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag QuickLessons. I would love to see your postcard and your part of the world. And that's it from me. Please do check out my channel down below. There are lots more quick tips on there for you. And please do like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more on your YouTube feed in the future. See you later.